Kick it! Welcome to Hard Headed Podcast. It's time to join the conversation. Welcome to the show. This show is sponsored by Trussell Media. Eat some videos made. Give them a call. Also, Admiral's Pennant. If you need some beard oil, go to admiralspennant.com. I put some of that on the other day. I felt real dapper. <laughs> Did you? Because that bottle's probably like six years old, sir. <laughs> it's not. It's like it's two. beyond its shelf life. You it's, it's like two need to it reorder. It did great. I don't need to reorder until I've exhausted my current supply. Have you not seen the economy? I see he's following my advice. Well done, sir. <laughs> Screwed myself over in the process. Yep. Yeah, I don't even there know what you you're go. talking about. Anyway, this is hard-headed, as you heard before. I'm sitting here with Chet Sears and Mr. Matt Amos. Hi. I am Troy Hi. Trussell, your host today. I'm Matt. Today we're going to talk about what's on Matt's mind. But first, or actually, but next, I'm going to tell you. The other two things we're going to talk about. That's a good job, man. Yeah. We've only been doing this for like a hundred and some odd episodes. I know. I can't I get it wrong every time. I believe this is a 128. We're right. going to talk about top three cuts of steak. And we're going to hear a good word from Chet. But first, Matt. Now. What is it? What's on your mind first. now? Now. What is on my mind now is I have uh, diligently been trying to work on a 1964 <laughs> Lincoln Continental. And it's, it's a lot of fun. I mean, uh, I've spent a lot less time, um, on Facebook. I spent a lot less time doing other things like, uh, video games and, uh, what else do I do? I don't know. Farming? Have you planted any? Uh, I have not farmed anything. You I get your not, food plots put in. Not, your, but my food plots established. I don't have to touch it. You don't have to touch it. Nope. Yeah. Yeah, we're good now. Clover. I might do something in the fall, um, like uh, the turnips or something like that in the fall. Plant some, plant some greens or something like that. To I read a paper from a biologist at K State that said don't do turnips in Kansas. Well, they work so temporarily. That's all I need. Okay. About five days. That's all I need it to work. All right. But, you know, and, and uh, it, it's a learning process for me because it uh, this isn't something that uh, my dad taught me growing up. You yeah. Know? I mean, it wasn't we weren't very automotive inclined in, inclined. And and, uh, you know, my biological father was a welder, but I never spent any time around him, which that skill would come in extremely handy right now. But from other members of my family said he wasn't really a teacher. So you're probably better off not having yeah. <laughs> welded with him. Uh, but uh, it's just, it's, it's interesting to me how relaxing that can actually be. Like it's like, I've had issues like with my cars, like in college, you know, and like alternator goes out or yeah. something goes wrong and, and you freak out immediately because you're like, I don't know how much this is going to cost. And if I need it to drive, so you, you're, you're working on a car that you don't need to drive. Yeah. That's just purely for if, yeah. whenever I get it done is when I get it done. You know, I've got kind of a deadline in mind. I'd like it to be done by at least drivable. It doesn't have to be perfect, but drivable for, um, my oldest senior and prom. stoppable stopping is my number one thing, which I'm going to get to. Yeah. Um, but have it done, you know, I kind of want it done around this time next year, at least drivable, to, yeah. to have uh, my oldest go to prom in it. Yeah. And, uh, but come to find out, you know, some of these older cars that, that this one has a single master cylinder instead of a dual master cylinder for the brakes. Mm -hmm. And that's the, like one of the number one things that all of the guys that drive these cars are like, that's the very first thing you want to replace because they're known to fail. And there's all kinds of pictures that these guys post in this group of the front of that, that car hits a fence or, or hits a thing in a road or something like that. And it gets dented up, which it, not much happens to those cars. Cause they're just yeah solid, solid, but you know, they post these and they're like, yep, pushed on the brakes and it went soft and, and just zero brakes. And then another guy was like, yeah, he goes, uh, some girl was walking in between traffic and all of a sudden, Nothing. I didn't have brakes. And it, I mean, I was literally almost going to pin this girl between my car, which this 
that Lincoln for for what it is weighs six thousand pounds. I mean, that's a heavy car. Uh, not quite as heavy as the electric vehicles coming out these days. But go ahead. No, what are those? What's a Tesla weigh? I don't know. They're they're the. I imagine those batteries are pretty heavy. Though. There are growing concerns that the parking infrastructure that has been set up in large cities will not be able to facilitate electric vehicles. That's an interesting. Wow. So, you know, like, hey, can you park a Tesla on one now? Yes. If 100% of the people are driving electric cars, like, they're going to have to go down. They're going to have to block off spots because if you filled one up, the whole thing would collapse. Huh. Anyway, that, sorry. Uh, yeah, big, big little, issue. Little big things issue. you don't think of yeah. that have an impact. That's weird. That's crazy. Uh, but anyway, so, you know, and this guy almost pinned this girl um, in between this car, but he had the wherewithal to uh, smash his uh, emergency uh, e-brake. And, uh, and then that stopped the car. Um, so I've been going through and trying to get all the parts together to switch that over, but um, even almost got kicked out of my, uh, uh, so I keep the car in a storage unit. And uh, that's where I've been doing all of my work on it. And about got kicked out of my storage unit, Troy, because I called the owner and I did the right thing. Cause my mom was, I was like, I told my mom what I was going to do. I was like, Hey, I'm just going to put a car lift. I'm going to buy a car lift and I'm going to pour a couple of little pads <laughs> in there to put the car lift on. And then I'll just put the car in there and I'll work on it. She's like, well, don't you think maybe you should ask the owner before you go doing something like that? I go, why? It's not going to change anything. I go, yeah. I'm, I'm just putting a car lift in there. And I said, I'm putting a couple of pads in there just to make it level, but I'm doing him a favor because it's just two extra little pads that are helping out. <laughs> and uh, she's like, well, you know, you know how I am. If it were me, I know how you are and how you do things. And I was like, yeah, ask forgiveness later. I mean, yeah, yeah. a little easier that way. I mean, yeah, I'll take the car out, a car lift out as soon as I finish my car. Yeah. I mean, or, you know, I get the car work done, then he finds uh, out and it's like, okay, I'm done anyway. I'll just, I'll move it all out. Fine. Yeah. But. I did it the right way and I called this guy and I was like, Hey, uh, um, question for you. Um, could I get you to pour a couple of pads in there? Um, and I'll pay for it. Or do you want me to, but I'd like to put a car lift in there. And, uh, I didn't hear anything for about a day, which is pretty rare because he normally gets back to me pretty quick. And, uh, the next day I, I text him again. I was like, Hey, uh, any, any, any word on this? And he goes, man, he goes, I can't, yeah, I can't allow you to do that. And I was like, well, I mean, I go, if you're worried about, I go, I'm not bolting it to the floor. I said, it's these, these things come on casters. So they're actually movable. I said, but I won't have the casters on when we're in there, but I mean, it's, it's portable. It's not a permanent mm -hmm. structure. He's like, no, no, that, that thing's for storage only. It's not for, it's not an auto shop. It's not for working on cars, just for storage. And I mean, <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's led to a whole new, uh, a whole new line. Like I, uh, I, I sent out to uh, a, a buddy of mine that's a contractor and I was like, give me a quote for a, uh, for a 36 by 30, uh, two car garage. And, uh, cause I, I had him quote my big shop, big shop in today. That ain't happening Yeah, in yeah. today's market right now. Anyway, I got to wait till the economy collapses, but I need something now. <laughs> Fingers crossed. And uh, I, I've saved. I'm yeah. ready to go. <laughs> but uh, so uh, hopefully um, I can get this 36 by 30 in a, in a reasonable uh, price so that I'll have a place to put the lift and work on the car at home and yeah, even be a little bit more uh, relaxing. But because um, it, it's, it's kind of funny because there's a lot of work, you know, and I mean, I, I think you guys saw my arms. Was it the last time? Yeah, yeah, you were busting all your yeah, knuckles and your arm scraped up. up and beat up, and I mean, I got under there, and I don't know how many times I crashed, you know, crunched my knuckles or hit my elbow, and you know, cursed at the car and all this kind of stuff, and but it's still a respite. For some reason, I still find that relaxing, and I don't know why. Yeah, because um, you don't have to drive it. Well, yeah, but it's just it's fun to to tinker on and like learn things that I didn't, you know, like how you know, because I, I I have a basic knowledge of you know, automotives and cars and stuff like that. But it yeah. was, you know, these cars are crazy. The amount of technology, one, the amount of technology that was available in 1964 that they were sending people to the moon back. Right. Then, but we just didn't think about, you know, yeah. we, we think it's so long ago, you know, but I mean, I got power seats and power windows and power, you know, well, yeah. vacuum system locks, but I mean, crazy Yeah, that the amount of, the amount of adjustability in the seat mm -hmm. is the same 
as my F-350 is right now. Yeah. And it costs a fraction of what that F-350 seat costs. One, yeah, 100% until I go get it refinished, and then it's yeah. going to be about the same. But The uh, Tesla vehicles range from like 3,200 pounds to 5,400 Hmm. So what? So that would be about the size of what? Well, I don't know. <laughs> what do you, I, I didn't know I was supposed to be. How, yeah, well, I was gonna say just how much more is that than the average car? Oh, because like I said, that's sixty four. It's eighteen feet long. It weighs six thousand pounds. But I think you know my truck, you know F three fifty, which fits in some parking garages, not all. Um, but that's you know it's right around. 6,000 pounds, I think. A Honda hey. Accord? What are, you, what are you doing? Small autos usually weigh around 2,500 pounds, and large automobiles around 4,200. SUVs or trucks can range from 3,500 pounds to over 6,000. Yeah, so the... Uh, and what did you say a Tesla was? 5,400? 5, 5, uh, the, the bigger one, yeah. Plaid or something like that. Well, according to... JD Power, that's no more than SUVs on the road today. But those aren't SUVs, those are cars. That's so. a car. So an electric SUV, I bet that Ford Lightning weighs a ton. But so in my more F- than a ton. My F <laughs> my F three fifties it's somewhere between fifty eight hundred and seventy six hundred pounds. So fifty four hundred is not that far off. So, so that'd the, be like the, a parking lot full of F-350s. Yeah. That's, yeah, that'd be a lot of weight. And, 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 but if you were to, you couldn't fill up a parking garage with F-350s because there's not enough space. But you could fill it up with Teslas. Ford Lightning is six to 6,900 pounds. Yeah. And that's, that's dry weight. Not that you're adding gas, but, you know, you're going to have stuff in it. People. Yep. Yeah, that's crazy. But anyway, so you, uh, I guess uh, overall kind of what's been on my mind is uh, uh, I would have – things I wish I would have learned, which may have been like a, a, a top three deal, which maybe we can do at some point. Mm-hmm. I don't think we've done that already. Top three things you wish you learned. Wish you would have learned. Yeah. Um, not that you can't learn them. Yeah. You know, but yeah. um, that I would have would have been really useful to know already how to weld. Yeah. I mean – and what's funny is is every every one of my buddies that's welders, what do they tell you? You it's, have any? You have you ever asked anybody? Um, hey, can you teach me how to weld, or can you show me? You ever asked anybody that? Yeah. No. You know what they say? Just uh, just get one to play around. No, yeah. Like, bro, I don't even know how to turn it on to play around. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I know that there's two bottles. I don't know what's in them. I know there's some electricity involved. Well, you got MIG and TIG. There's all the, kinds the, of different welders. Right, and it's like, I don't I don't know. You're, you're thinking of like an acetylene torch. You're separating with that, not welding. See, you know more than I do already. Well, I've so anyway, worked in shops. I'm, so. I'm, I'm really uh, excited because my daughter, my, my youngest, is a freshman next year, and she's taking shop, and welding is one of the classes. Nice. So if... Any of the floor pans need to be replaced. Guess what she gets to do? She gets to weld the floor pans in place, and then she gets to teach me how to weld, which I think would be kind of cool. Let me tell you what my dad did with a hole that we had in our floorboard. I think it was the Ford Courier that we had. He took a it's mason a lid. Flintstone car. Jar. The you know how it's got the two piece lid you know what I'm talking about on a mason jar yeah so that little metal disc and like some JB weld or something <laughs> it's just like, glued it yeah yeah both sides yep yep yeah well I mean and and, uh, <laughs> and like he kept the rain the water from the road blowing up in the truck while you're driving down there perfect yeah that's, that's all, all you need. need yeah yeah but uh, so it's kind of funny because you know I was I was telling this to my uh, my second oldest brother and. Uh, He's like, yeah, he goes, and he calls him daddy. He goes, daddy didn't teach me any of that stuff either. He goes, I, I don't know anything about that. You know, he goes, I know how, and he, he's worked on his own cars and cause he's a pastor and not a lot of money. And so he's done a lot of his own mechanicing over mm-hmm. the years. And, and, uh, he's like, you know, but the one thing I do remember is one time back in, he goes, I think it was 83, the power went out and, uh, 
He goes, Daddy used his uh, his welder as a uh, as a generator to keep his coffee warm. And he goes, but that's that's about the only. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, well, he he definitely he was a boiler maker, so he knew. Yeah, he knew welding in and out, but nice. Just some of those things I wish I would have learned, you know, a little bit more about uh, um, welding and metal work and stuff, because I think it's just so interesting and I'm I'm attracted to it. So it's, it's great. Right. It's ingrained in me genetically, I think, to to want to do something like that. And I think it's something I could be good at if I could learn. Um, but like I said, everybody's like, just go play around. I'm like, no, I don't. That's not how my brain works. I don't just play around with. Yeah, <laughs> I, it's fascinating, I, especially with the heat and electricity and all that kind of stuff. And but I had a. I used to hang around in the uh, with the maintenance guys in the maintenance shop in my first job in a factory, and heck, I had to make gun parts for me, like a bolt on an old Marlin that they didn't they they didn't have that part. The uh, Enumeric or whoever it was, they they're like, we don't we don't have this. So I showed him a picture of it, and he's like, oh yeah, I think I could turn that, you know. And he got some scrap metal and goes back there, and just some really cool stuff like that. Well, I mean, it's just like when uh, you know Big Al when he. Uh, uh, built my motorcycle. I mean, I was there for a majority of that process and just to watch him create, I mean, you, it, it's part artistry when you're, when you're doing that stuff, but to see him just like take a piece of cardboard, go, Oh man, this would be a really cool shape here. You know, you gotta have the vision, mm-hmm. you know, unless it's already built like this car, you know, and then you can just, you already know what you're doing, but um, you know, and then take a piece of cardboard and then cut that out of metal and then weld that piece to this piece and then put it on there and then grind it all down. So it's smooth and rounded. And you're like, what, what just happened? I know what that piece looked like when you started. How did you get it to look like that? It's just not welders. Yeah. Welders and metal workers just impressed me. I'm, I'm extremely impressed by that trade. Very good. All right. We're going to take a break. Come back with our top three cuts of meat. Are you driving traffic to your website? Do you have an engaging homepage? Better yet, does your homepage have a video? We recently created a video for a client about his business and the services they provide. Since he placed the video on the homepage of their website, he has had a number of clients specifically say they decided to use his services because of that video. At Trussell Media, we help businesses create engaging videos to host on their websites, email to clients, and use in their social media marketing. Contact us if you're interested in creating a video for your homepage today, trusselmedia.com. Fill out the form at trusselmedia.com slash contact. Let us help you tell your story through video. And we're back. All right, we're back. Before we get into our top three. Cuts of steak. Cuts of steak. Just want to apologize to all of our listeners out there for past few episodes and Matt's poop mouth. Just what? Wanna- <laughs> I have not had anything this episode. Not yet. It I ain't said, over yet. I said the past few episodes. Yeah. Had a little potty mouth. I have. Uh, I, one I of our listeners. So. I like Ron, one like of our Ron listeners. Burgundy over there. What? And, you just never. <laughs> and they said. Uh, <laughs> He'll read exactly what they the, said. They said, you know what <laughs> I love about you guys is I could listen to this in my car with my kids. And that day, the episode dropped with Matt's potty mouth. That day, I don't, like, well, I don't even know. That we lost a listener. I don't yeah. even know what I said. Yeah, huh? I don't even know what I said. Yeah, well, we'll we can't say it again. No, we'll tell you. We'll no. tell you later. Well, like I like I told you, I'm a sinner, Chet. I'm not yeah. perfect. <laughs> it's true. So it's hard to break some habits. Yeah. All right, uh, Chet, what do you got? The top sirloin is my number three cut of steak. I am a. That's all I have. Back when in my younger days, that's all I could even all you afford. Could afford. So it still has an affinity in my heart. The next one, um, the hanger steak. Are you aware of this? I know about the hanger. I don't know where. You know about the skirt where, where steak? The, I know. Oh, I know all about a skirt steak because oh, that's what you use yeah. for carne asada. So the skirt is uh, like p- part of kind of the edge of what the hanger is. It's a little bit more in the middle of the diaphragm. Um, I'm a fan of the skirt and the and the hanger skirts um, delicious if it's cooked right big big fan number two number and if it's cooked right it's not too tough because you can have some skirts well, here, here's the thing really here's, here's a caveat with all cuts of steak they're only good if they're cooked right uh very true. all right all right yeah. let's just get that out there all right that's out of the way yeah number one ribeye this is there's no way around it there's you can't i mean all if you guys have something different I'm going to disagree with you, but we'll I, got, I got something. Different. I got something different because y'all don't know. You don't know. There's no way around all that fat in a ribeye. I huh. mean, you just, there's so much that 
Yeah. Gross. I eat a lot hey. of it. I don't. Dude. You don't like I the will, fat? I will end up with a pile of fat. I just cannot stand the consistency. What's the, wrong the, with the you? The flavor. What's wrong with you? Is phenomenal. But the, you, he's but, been drinking Bud Light. But when that hits my mouth. <laughs> yingling. Uh, no. I don't even. I don't drink beer, but if I did, it would be yingling. Um, but no, all that fat, golly, no. That's for, it's healthy. He said you got to eat for you. everything on the plate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you even that little piece of gristle. Mm -hmm. Nope. Well, you guys are wrong. That was the old. I don't know what your top three or, is, but you're, you're wrong. That's the best cut of steak ever. Well, you're you me. have a right to your own opinion. No. There's all right. Well, I'll facts. Go. Spit some facts. My number three, the sirloin strip. Which is, I believe, the same as the top sirloin. I think so. Uh, number two, the ribeye. I'll, well, it's, at least it's in your top three. <laughs> I don't think it's in Matt's. I love the ribeye, man. It's good. It's fantastic. Not a fan. Um, number one, filet mignon. <laughs> so good. Melts mm. in your mouth. Mm. It's delicious. You don't even need a knife. Can't you don't need it. a knife with a ribeye. Oh. Oh. Yeah, to pull it apart to get the fat off. Yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, what do you got? Number three. Sirloin. Look at us. Trip. Same reason. Uh, because I grew up eating it whenever we'd go to a steakhouse. We couldn't afford the really good stuff, so I would always order the sirloin. Yeah. Because I could get a lot more for a lot less. Mm -hmm. And I had a big appetite when I was... Oh yeah, younger. We, okay. ow, serves you right. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> there was a deal when I was in college. The uh, we go to Ryan's. Was there a Ryan's buffet? You guys know what I'm talking about. Uh, we had a Ryan Steakhouse. Yeah, yeah, the, but yeah. it's a buffet, yeah. right? So we, we were standing in line one day because we had a. I had a goal. I don't know why. Like just one. I'm just gonna pay for one meal a day. Like that was. And so where could you get enough food? Where you're like, I'm satisfied. I wasn't paying like a whole lot of money, and I'm not gonna have to eat again today. You know, so you've heard me talk about Barbecue City. There was like a Chinese buffet and, and Ryan's. We're standing in line one day, and uh, my buddy Lance is looking up there at that menu, and I'm like, Why are you looking at the menu? He's like, I think I'm figuring something out. I'm like, we're just getting the buffet, dude. And he, you know, started adding things up, and he asked the lady. He said, Hey, it looks like if we got, if I ordered a petite sirloin and a small buffet which if you ordered an entree your steak you can order a side which is the buffet he's like it looks like that comes out cheaper than just the buffet she's like yeah it's like 63 cents cheaper <laughs> so dude steak and the buffet and they, you know you had to get a new plate every time you went back so they gave you a small plate for the buffet which is the first plate that you had, but then you just went and got a bigger plate after you after you're doing that. So we were getting steak and the buffet and eating cheaper than just the buffet. It was awesome. Sixty three cents cheaper. And I'm petite sirloin. Anyway. Okay. Number two. A five Wagyu New York New York strip. That may be the, 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 the you know what? New York strip makes my top three overrated steak cuts. <laughs> it, it used it used to make mine until it was wagyu. Yes. Yeah. That that made and that was one of those steaks um, that uh, we went and bought at a uh, at a butcher shop, and then we brought back uh, to the house when I was in Kentucky, and uh, per, Josh prepared it because mm -hmm. um, he does a phenomenal job on steaks. That was the richest steak that I've ever had. Why, why are they so good? Because it's marveled well, not just... <laughs> the, the, the fat. I can hear you grinning. It's because it's got fat. But not globs <laughs> of fat. Not just globs. Not like a ribeye, apparently. Yeah. No, definitely you not You want to like genetically engineer the cow to have ribeye fat in all of its muscle fibers. That's, that's all they did. I said the flavor of that was awesome, but it's just the consistency. Yeah. This solves it. Yeah. And so rich that I couldn't... I, I mean, and I felt bad. I was like, I cannot eat this whole thing because it's it's that rich. And so, I had it next morning with eggs. Yeah, but uh, like we did those moose steaks that time. Yeah, same yeah. thing. And then uh, number one, bacon wrap fillet. 
What? Why do you have to have bacon on a fillet? I just like the flavor of bacon because they're too. dry. No, that's no, why. No, they don't have not, enough fat. No, not necessarily. They don't have. They, I don't like the bacon wrap. I like a regular fillet meal. I, I, I like, like I like the bacon in there just because it adds that uh, like that bacon flavor to it. I just I don't. I don't yeah, because like you need it because it. it's not that good of a cut of meat. No, it doesn't need it. it, it it's just bacon. like A1. I, I love A1. It's, the least, it's delicious. It just adds to it. it. Dude, Thicker I saw better. somebody marinate no, their smoking wood chips in A1 the other day. And I was like, I bet that's good. The, I have a, to try like that. an A1 smoke. I have to try that. Yeah, I bet that. Man, I, I saw that. And I was like, oh, that's pretty good. Here, here's 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 two reasons. Now, do you know the reason why um, they created A one? No. Back in the day, it was to cover the taste of rancid meat. Mm. Oh, okay. So, you, but you still ate it, yeah. Yeah, so they could still, you know, it wasn't like it to the point it was going to kill you, but it was to cover the smell because they didn't have a place to refrigerate their food. So, well, my thing with wagyu and Mignon. You shouldn't have you shouldn't have names that people can't pronounce on your marketable meat. So that's another strike against both of the, your suggestions. <laughs> Filet mignot. Yeah. Mignon. You said mignon. Some people would say mignon. And wagyu or wagyu or wagyu. wagyu. You know, huh? Psh, I'm not even gonna order it. <laughs> I don't want to hear it. Well, see, here, like, get here, that stuff out of there. The, the other day, I was I bribed <laughs> my girls to get ready for something. You know, like it was like a Saturday. I'm like, yeah. And if you get up early, we they had to do something. I'll go and get you a drink. You know, at the coffee shop or whatever while you're getting ready. And they're like, and they did it, and I'm like, oh crap! Now I got to go get them a drink. So I went to a place and I ordered a caramel, uh, whatever caramel. Yeah, and they they corrected me in the drive. Do you mean caramel? whoa i'm like no i don't i would have left it's caramel and i would stare that person in the face and say i will never buy from you again like i did with nola's pizza that's right that you don't it's wrong number one number two (laughs) number two just let it be you don't need to correct me on that it's caramel these people around here the midwest nice whatever (laughs) (laughs) they're not perfect yet yeah that was it uh pecan or pecan pecan Pecan. Pecan. Whatever. No, what, yeah, you just picked whatever we weren't going <laughs> to say. You're trying to stir the pot. <laughs> All right. Well, that was good. Any honorable mentions? Prime rib anywhere? No? No. Uh, I I did a prime rib for uh, Christmas, and it was pretty good, but it, it's... They're hit know. or miss, and they're always too expensive. Very expensive. Yeah. So I do like a good prime rib, though. Now, the, uh, now when I was really poor... Like on my own pour, the uh, hamburger steak. It's a burger patty. Pretty much. Onion on top. You put <laughs> yeah. some onion on that thing. But it was good because I used to have yeah. that at Doc's Steakhouse. And if you guys had ever eaten at Doc's and had the garlic salad at Doc's, oh. oh I would soak those patties six ninety nine in Worcestershire sauce and butter. Mm. Worcestershire? Worcestershire. Worcestershire. What is that? Worcestershire? About? Wash your sister sauce. Oh, yeah. Watch, watch your sister sauce. I've heard that. Yeah. Yeah. I bet you guys have. Watchers. Uh, shut up. All right. All right. Good word, Chet. What do you got for us? So um there's this dude I watch on YouTube. His name's Sean Ryan. You know who I'm talking about? I do not. He was a former Navy SEAL and a former employee of the CIA, according to his bio. And he lands some pretty good candidates for interviews and he's only he hadn't been out there that long like it's a podcast but it's only on youtube he's got over a million followers he's very good similar to rogan in the fact that he'll ask a question and then be quiet for like 10 minutes and let that person just talk and tell stories and some of the people that serve with people that we know have been on there and that's that's one of those guys i had uh i had uh that's how i found this guy well anyway very calm guy, very, you know, and so I'm on, uh, I'm on the internet the other day on Twitter and, um, he it, live to, this is just a fascinating thing. I'm going to read you a couple of his tweets and these are over the course of a two day, two day span. And 
it's just this is fascinating and this this comes from and so the word the good word is hope and this is not hope at first he said uh he said today i'm going to try church for the first time in many years i've never taken it seriously this time i will i hope to see some of you there i've reached a cycle it's another tweet i've reached a psychological state where i realized i had nothing to lose but the darkest of negativity that is what brought me here. I can already feel it leaving my body. I must be home now. And then a little bit later, I cried. My wife cried. Thank you for welcoming us into your kingdom. And then he tweets, I felt alone for a long time. I've wondered where are all the people who align with the values and morals I was raised on. The people who are tired of having this ridiculous new culture forced upon them. The people who will stand against what they know in their hearts is wrong. As it turns out, they were here all along. I was looking in all the, the wrong places. They are all followers of Christ. And just like that, I'm not alone anymore. And then a little bit later, this is a, the last of that series. I've been trying to make sense of all that is happening in my country right now and in the world, only to conclude there is no sense to be made. The absurdness, absurdness has led me to find Christ. Here I am. So his despair, his lack of hope and everything turned him to the one place he hadn't looked yet, which, which was church. And that kind of reminds me of uh, a passage out of Colossians chapter one. I'm going to read verses three through eight. We always thank God. The This is Paul writing to the church in Colossae. The, we always thank God, the Father of our, our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you because we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love you have for all of God's people, the faith and love that spring from the hope stored up for you in heaven and about which you have already heard in the true message of the gospel that has come to you, the gospel that has come to you. In the same way, the gospel is bearing fruit and growing throughout the world just as it has been doing among you since the day you heard it and truly understood God's grace. You learned it from a Apharius, our dear fellow servant, who is a faithful minister of Christ our Lord, and our, from Christ our Lord on his behalf, and who also told us your love in the Spirit. If you, if you go back to the beginning here, the faith and love that spring from the hope stored up for you. So his lack of hope or his despair, Sean Ryan's turns him to church. And now he has found people and he's found hope. And what does hope bring forth? If you want to think about planting, it's the fertilizer and it's going to grow faith and love. So the, the beauty the, here kind of connecting those dots is that the guy didn't have anywhere else to turn and he's an intellectual individual and asks a lot of questions and he's just seeing what's happening and just gets further and further and further in despair. And there's nobody else out there that sees the, what I see there's, it's just, it's lost. All hope is lost. And he shows up and he's like, Nope, it's, it's Christ. There's, there's hope here. I feel like I'm home now that, that, you know, I'm, I'm being called to be here. It's, it's very impactful, very emotional. And then because of that hope now, we're going to see his faith grow and his love grow. And I'm really excited about that because that's what hope in Christ does is it, it changes you. It does things. And, and, and what it does is it increases your faith and it increases your love for others and your love for him. So that's the good word. Hope. Thanks for listening to the hard headed podcast. Don't forget to share this podcast with others to help us get the word out. Also, if you haven't yet, please rate and review the show. This helps our podcast show up in other people's suggested shows that may or may not have listened to us before. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week.